Hi, I'm John Ruggiero. Welcome to this episode of New Jersey Paranormal. With me today is my friend and psychic medium, Connie Ellick from JJ Ellick Realty. How are you, Connie? Good to have you here. Wonderful to be here, John. I've known Connie for many years. Connie supports a lot of our events that we do in Woodbridge. Um, but Connie is also, like I said, a psychic medium. Um, Connie, I'm, you know me, I'm, I'm a skeptic. You've known me for years. Um, I believe, but I also have a lot of questions and I come to you with a lot of my questions and you answer them for me. But I am very interested in mediums and how it starts and what happens along the way. So again, this is mm -hmm. my curiosity here. Um, when did it all start for you? How old were you when you noticed that you could communicate with spirits? Well, the first time that I consciously remember was when I was two years old. I had an uh, invisible dog or a friendly dog that okay. I used to feed scraps under the table. Uh, the, Did the dog uh, have a name? Uh, I don't remember the okay. name. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just don't. But uh, they would always tease me about my, my dog because there was always a pile of scraps under wherever I sat to have breakfast, lunch, dinner, or snacks. Um, after that, I was, I was seven years old when I, I truly, truly were, was getting uh, visions and dreams and uh, a lot of spirits would come and it was very confusing um, and you would go to talk, I would talk to my mother or talk to my father and you were always met with skepticism and uh, well you have an active imagination or a vivid imagination and it was very troubling for a child because sometimes the dreams were uh, ones of accidents or death. Oh, wow. And uh, at that point, uh, they didn't want to hear it. They would get very, very upset with whatever information I had. And a lot of times, just as a child, and I know that there are children out now that, uh, that are young that have these dreams and they can't talk to their parents or they can't talk to a teacher or an adult because they're frightened. They don't want to be told that they're lying or that they're crazy, um, or that uh, they're just, they're nuts in plain English. Well, that's the thing too. When, when, you were, when it started happening to you, in your mind, did you think that they could be imaginary friends, that maybe you were just? Absolutely, yes, I thought that they were imaginary friends because there were little children that would come and play, and you know, a lot of the children that you see that play quietly by themselves, uh, or not by themselves. They have friends with them. It's just that the adults around them generally can't see who's with them at all. W were these spirits that were in the home that you were occupying or were they from They were from all over. Somewhere else. They, would just, they would just gravitate because spirits generally do gravitate to whomever can see, hear, or smell, or listen and play with them because especially children that died young, they're always looking for that playmate. Uh, okay. They're always looking for a, a group of children to play with so that, that they're included and not excluded. Do, do you remember any specific spirits from the beginning? Was there, was there a reoccurring spirit, man, woman, child that would come visit you often uh, in the beginning? Uh, no, there were, no. There were just a lot of them. Uh, there were a lot of children. There were some, some adults, but I just don't remember the names. It was, it was a while ago. Uh, again, going back to your parents, um, did they ever mention taking you to a psychiatrist or um, no, they just a thought therapist. I had a very active imagination, and uh, I remember my father at different times, he, he would just say, how do you come up with this stuff? Where, where do you come up with this? And it's like, because I had, you know, there were questions that I would have, and they had no answers for me, but there were times where I would kn know something was going to happen, and uh, when I would tell people, they, and it would happen, they, they thought, oh my God, she must be a witch or something because she said this was going to happen and it actually happened. So you end up um, losing a lot of friends that way as a teenager because they were afraid to walk with you or talk with you because if you saw something and mentioned it and it happened, um, they thought for whatever reason you brought it on. So it, it was very difficult. See that, again, uh, early on, before I really got into the paranormal and started doing research and everything, my impression of a medium was based on the movie Ghost. Mm. I would sit and watch Whoopi Goldberg, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I thought that's the way it was for mediums, that mm -hmm. they would be somewhere and they would be an open channel for spirits and that they would just sense somebody mm -hmm. like you and even here now, mm -hmm. that they would pop up over there and over there and they would start talking to you and saying, I'm here, I have a, you know, could you talk to me? Could you help me with this? Mm -hmm. um, but that's not the way 
it happens? Well, every, everybody is, is a little different. Um, I find that uh, places where, if you want to use the word spirits or ghosts, hang out, uh, funeral parlors, uh, a lot sense. of times they hang around there and they, when they find somebody like myself that comes in, they usually, they usually try to contact you or touch you or get your attention so that you can give a message to the loved one, especially if there's people in the casket and you have people that are grieving. And uh, I recall not too long ago that experience had happened to me. I was at a local a funeral parlor and it was a neighbor that had died and um, someone in the, the viewing and the visiting uh, friends uh, was also getting ready to pass and one of her relatives had come over and really wanted me to talk to her to tell her not to be afraid that she was going to be okay that she would be met by loved ones and uh, I just kept I didn't know the woman I wasn't about to approach her with that kind of information for me uh, I I really don't want to do things like that because it's an invasion of privacy so I have boundaries um, if I'm doing an event and I'm asked specific questions, yes, I'd be happy to answer any questions that I can, but I don't go up to people and tell them things that are going to happen because it's, uh, it's problematic for me because of the invasion of privacy. Well, that's the thing, too. I won't mention anybody's name, but there are mediums on TV that yes. you know of and I know of that will be in the food store mm -hmm. and they'll approach people and say, you know, your father's coming through, your mother's coming through. Does that ever happen to you where you could be down the street at the shop right and the woman next to you online, somebody's coming through saying, hey, could you give this person a message and you just... I generally block it. Okay. I, I generally block it. Unless it's, uh, unless somebody has a specific question, uh, at a party a few years ago, someone had approached me and had asked about uh, their son. And uh, I had told the woman, I said, just, it was right before the Christmas holidays, and I said, just have him be very, very careful driving. Tell him not to get into a car with anybody that's been drinking. Uh, I could feel that there was uh, a potential accident uh, okay. hovering around that particular person. And as it turned out, uh, he did decline a ride uh, with someone that has, had been drinking, and that person was in an accident. But along those same lines with the spirits, because again, I'm really curious mm -hmm. about this. In that type of situation, when the spirit's trying to communicate with you yes. to get a message to someone who, say, is you know five feet away from you, how do you handle that on your end? Do you just block them out so that the the communication stops? Unless or, they, uh, sorry, or do they just go away? Unless they say it's their danger is imminent, uh, then I would generally just say, you know, sorry, I'm not, I don't do that, I'm not going to do that, and okay. uh, then they do, they just go away. Okay, but you don't see them, like I said in the movie Ghost, you don't see the spirits as me sitting here in front of you communicating. Do you see them like that, or sometimes? Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. Sometimes okay. they come in um, as a voice, sometimes they come in as a shape, sometimes it's a, it's a feeling or an appearance. I'll get uh, an idea of a size, uh, if, a, if it's especially if it's a, a grandmother, a small grandmother, I'll, I'll usually say I have a, a think it's a grandmother, but tiny little under five feet. And then it's usually I'll get gestures, I'll get finger pointing, or or they'll um, they'll talk with their hands. So at that point, uh, then I try to pinpoint a name, or I'll ask for a birthday or an approximate birthday because it helps zero in on that particular person. And if they have a specific message, and a lot of times people die and. And the messages don't get, um, they don't, they're not received. So I had a client that had come in for, for a reading because I do a lot of the card readings. And uh, her mother had passed away uh, in the hospital. She just didn't get there in time. So when she came to see me, um, it was very, very emotional. The mother came through immediately. And um, <clears throat> she and I sat and cried for the whole half hour because there was so much information. The mother wanted her to know and how much she was loved and how much she was missed and how sorry she was about the different things that happened when she was a child. And a lot of times uh, people do hold on to those little hurts when they're children. Right. And they hang on to them even when they're, they're adults. So the mother did explain that, you know, different times when she was a child she was punished and uh, she had overreacted and she was asking for her daughter's forgiveness. So it's, uh, it's very, very emotional. And, and that must be the thing, too, uh, with everyone. There's a lot of things left unsaid in life. Yes. And when somebody passes, that remains the mystery. You always wonder. Mm -hmm. So going to people 
like a psychic medium is an outlet for some to yes. try to resolve those issues. Um, I've been to our events. We have the group mm -hmm. readings. Um, we, we throw the big expo in Woodbridge and I see a lot of the, the mediums doing the readings. There is a lot of feelings, yes. which is understandable. A lot of tears. Um, you would think, again, from my perspective, outsider looking in, it is therapeutic. It is a form of yes. therapy. Yes. But you do have those people that are sort of psychic junkies. Junkies. <laughs> yes. And that, that, I mean, and you do have to sort of limit yes. some people yes, in do. the number of readings. That you, have you had anyone who was just too much where yes i do i do have several clients that are that way and i generally tell people that unless your life has changed significantly right. once a year is enough really really once a year it, once a year is all you really okay. need unless there's uh, if there's a traumatic event or if you've lost a job to a loved one uh, anything like that or uh, you really need some guidance then once a year is enough but i do have people that call every week just to kind of check in and it's uh... you know if it's a two minute phone call or three minute phone call it's fine it really okay. is fine um, they just want to make sure they're on the right track that's okay uh, but then you do have the, the the clients that will just keep going to psychic after psychic basically looking for someone to tell them things they want to hear not necessarily what's out there but things that they want to hear could you could you sense that someone has a negative energy spirit attached to them? Uh, generally, yes. So you could be within in the room and tell yes. that person that person. Yes. Do you approach them and ever or only if again if, if they, they come and they ask me if okay. they ask me specifically? I know the Italians. Um, I'm Italian. By yes, the way. I know you are, <laughs> and I and they. And I don't know the symbol, but they, they are, it's the evil eye or whatever. Right, right. And I've had several uh, Italian clients that have asked whether or not they had something attached to them okay. or, or evil eye. Um, I think I, I've been one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we do remove that. Right, and, right. And what happens is um, a lot of times people don't realize that negative thought forms attach to the body. Okay. And... Um, uh, it's it's actually mental energy that adheres and forms an object uh, and is attached to the body. So it can drag you down, it can make you feel uh, lethargic or uh, just troublesome more than anything else. Uh, can use it as an example, you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off and you might uh, blast something at them and call them a name. Well, that's a negative thought form that okay. gets attached to that particular person. And um, I did the expo that we did in That Pat was about 30 people on the way here, <laughs> yes, by the I'm way. Sure. So <laughs> the snow and the ice. When we did the expo in, in Patterson, there was a gentleman that had approached me, and he was just covered. He was just covered with okay. negative thought forms. And he and his wife had come over to, to seek me out, and they said, we know that you can do this. And I said, yes, I can. And I worked on him for about 20 minutes. And uh, I'm not going to tell you, but what I see, uh, I can see knives. I can see the, the pitchforks or the, I did a hairdresser, a gentleman that had a shop down in South Jersey, and he had all women that were working for him. And uh, he was full of rat tail combs and oh. scissors and razors. And because he would make a comment, and whether it was sexist or not, it didn't really matter. They would take offense and they would oh. kind of grab him. So when he came to see me, he just kept saying, I, I feel kind of funky. I don't know what's going on. And it's like, oh, yeah, his, um, his fields were really messed up. Well, that's what happened to me. I mean, yes. I'll mention it here. I had gone through a lot of uh, personal issues last year, and it just seemed to be negative thing after negative mm -hmm. thing and, and it was just uh, it was a downward spiral mm -hmm. and I did feel like there was something attached mm -hmm. to me and, and you know me yes I'm a big-time skeptic but I was at the point where I did come to you for mm -hmm. assistance and ask you is there something going on is there something mm -hmm. attached to me is there mm -hmm. some kind of negative attachment and you did help me with that and I did feel better whether that was psychologically for me or if it really did happen that it was removed. Mm -hmm. I did feel better, and, and I thanked you for that. Yes. Because there was a lot going on at that time. Um, we talked about visions of the future. Yes. And things that you have said to people that mm -hmm. to warn them. Yes. Um, that's part of the psychic medium mm -hmm. process. Does that happen often? What type of things have you experienced where you've actually warned people? Of well, things that were going to occur. It's uh, there are times where 
people will ask me a specific question or ask me about a, a family member and uh, if I feel something I will tell them I will absolutely tell them uh, I think I have discussed with you before when I was 12 I had had a dream that my grandfather my mother my mother's father was going to pass and um, and he and I came downstairs woke up came downstairs to tell my parents my mother was very upset and slapped me and had told me you know not to speak speak of those things and within a week he had passed he had a kidney failure and had passed um, and there are times if I'm, I'm doing uh, parties or if I'm doing readings for people um, there was one I did in August a few years back uh, for a group of ladies down the shore and the woman one woman had asked me about her husband and I, I'm an empath also, so I'll feel an area of the body where there's a problem. So I had said uh, heart or lungs, and she said yes. And I said to her in a flip way, and I didn't really mean it to be a flip way, but I said to her, you know, make sure his insurance premiums are paid. Mm -hmm. So uh, she looked at me and she says, what does that mean? And I said, make sure his insurance premiums yeah. are paid. So she says, well, how much time does he have? And I said, by Christmas. And it was wow. just the information had come in so crystal clear that, and she asked the question. Right. So I felt compelled to give her the answer that I was getting. And I had found out later that, uh, yes, he died a day or two before Christmas. But the good thing about it is that she was able to prepare. She was able to get all of the things that she needed to, to get through in uh, taking care of prior to his death. So it was a, it was a bonus and it was a benefit to her. Well, you had mentioned to me when we were talking the other day um, about a surgery mm -hmm. where you thought it wasn't a good day to have the procedure exactly. and then it turns out exactly. something did happen. Along those same lines of being an, an empath, um, I've been with you mm -hmm. in buildings where I ask you to walk through and I get mm -hmm. your impression and you actually do cough yes. or you tell me what you're feeling those are the spirits that are there, or is that what happened to the spirits that were there? Are they still feeling those things in death? Uh, it's a combination. If, if you, we're going through, like the, the one property that we had visited where the woman was strangled, right. it was, I was experiencing, I could see, I could see the woman being choked. Uh, I could experience the woman's, uh, her throat uh, being constricted, the, the vertebrae snapping. I could feel the fact that she had, she wasn't having any oxygen coming to her lungs and she was dying. So uh, yes, I was coughing and gagging because it was a natural reaction. Um, and uh, once I left that area and I took a glass of water, a sip of water, ate something, I was able to get rid of that particular energy. Um, but it does happen. I, I did the um, walkthrough with Parker Press years ago, right. and uh, as I had walked through, um, there was a, a soldier. He was a, an American, young American, that was dressed in a farm outfit, uh, overalls, etc. And he was he was shot in the chest. And as he walked through me, he was saying that he, I can't breathe. And he kept repeating that over and over again. And the, his spirit walked through me. And as it walked through me, I experienced exactly what he was feeling because I couldn't breathe. And uh, I actually staggered over to a pine tree that was at Parker Press and wrapped my arms around it just to, just to ground myself and to get my bearings back. There was another gentleman that was with me at the time, and he didn't know what to do because he had never experienced anything like that. And he says, well, what should I have done? And I said, there really wasn't anything that you could do because the spirit had attached to me and I needed to be grounded. Now, would you say that was a residual energy yes. that's just there yes. on, in that area? And then yes. just it's not something that you could actually communicate with. That's just sort of a stain on the land type of thing. That's just I think an it's imprint. An, I think it's an energy and it is an imprint that's there. Okay. I don't know if that spirit is still there. I've been to Parker Press many times since then. Uh, but I have, I went there the one day specifically as I walked through the gate with the intention of finding out what had happened, if there was anything of interest on that particular property. And that's, uh, that's what ended up happening. And there was a, there were a lot of things that happened that day. I saw, uh, two women, probably from the Revolutionary War. They were, they were large women, uh, dressed in white, the far end of the field. And they had this, this big black, like a cauldron, but they were boiling sheets and they were boiling, uh, 
bandages f for the wounded, etc. That's how they were sterilizing them and they were cleaning them. And you, they had this big wooden paddle that they were mm. they were stirring the. Uh, I guess they had used lye and a bunch of other ingredients in the water to purify and to clean those those uh, strips of bandages. And well, along those same lines, uh, when it comes to spirits and you're seeing spirits. Do you have the ability to assist the spirit in crossing over? Yes, I have done that. I've done that on many occasions where uh, they, get, they get stuck, uh, I guess is a good way to put it. Uh, a friend years ago, his mother had uh, Alzheimer's and um, was lost. She had, didn't have a, she had lost her mind for a good 20 years. And I know she and I had spoken of it. And a lot of times, once the spirit passes, they'll send a message to the loved ones and a lot of times it'll be through a dream or a vision and then I'm able to contact the people just to say just want to let you know uh, your mother father grandmother boyfriend husband significant other past had this message for you and it's a bit of closure for them and it's really really wonderful um, and this one particular woman um, we were doing there were two other ladies and myself were doing a group meditation where we were channeling the information and helping spirits that were stuck okay. and and um, this one woman's mother had come through, and she did have a message so, for her, so I was able to call her. So it is mostly unfinished business. Yes. It's just not that they don't know where to go or they don't know that they've passed in, in your sometimes experience. Sometimes it's that too. Okay. Sometimes it's that too. If it's unfinished business or if they don't know they're dead, sometimes okay. that does happen, that they really don't realize that they've passed. And um, I, had, I had bought a house on High Street in Woodbridge years ago, and the woman had actually died in the house okay. and uh, it was I knew before I had bought the house that she had died there uh, it didn't bother me at all but she would come to visit every once in a while the lights would go on in the, the closet the drawers would open and she was always looking for something so at one point I had said to her because she she scared the bejeebas out of my, my daughter and uh, she'd say mom I hear somebody walking around and it's like it's okay she's just looking for something we'll find out what it is and I ended up at one point saying to her uh, Mrs. so-and-so you know you don't live here anymore you've passed and it's it's okay uh, and she was looking for some papers, okay. but, but that's what she was looking for. Uh, wait, you're a real estate agent. Yes, we right. talked about this yes. uh, on the phone the other day. Um, you list houses, you mm -hmm. sell houses. Yes. Um, what do you do when, you're, when you enter a home and you feel that negative energy? Because I'm sure you could pick up on it if you're going to list a house and mm -hmm. you will look at the property. Mm -hmm. what do you, how do you handle that? Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be negative energy. Okay. Energy. It can be a positive energy. There can be a spirit that's uh, very happy in the house and okay. wants to stay there uh, as long as they have their rocking chair or view of the water or whatever it is that they're looking to, to retain. And as long as it doesn't, uh, and they can't, they're not necessarily destructive. They just want to be there. They're at peace at that particular house and that property. Um, I always, I always will tell someone if they're looking to buy a, a particular house, if there's been a death in the in the house, okay. um, because sometimes it will affect the people that buy it. Uh, I can a lot of times with estates. Uh, we do get that where they'll say, you know, we understand this is an estate. Did the woman or the man, did they die in the house? If they did, I will tell them, yes, they did. Uh, if I feel that there's still energy there, I will help it to be removed because a lot of it is, is using sage and is using a lot of other methods that I do to ask them to move along, that okay. they don't have to stay there. And a lot of times um, the people are oblivious that, that it doesn't bother them at all. It doesn't bother them. And okay. they're actually excited that, to share their space <laughs> with spirits. Um, I've been doing this a long time. You've had this ability for a long time. I'm sure there were days when, you know, when you were younger in your teens, in your 20s, where this really was sort of taboo to even discuss this or you wouldn't mention it to anybody. What is the difference in your experience between then and now? I think uh, years ago it was it was very much taboo. Uh, I was raised Roman Catholic, and um, the teachings of the church are very important. Um, some things um, I found that as I've gotten older, it's part of who I am, and uh, I don't deny it. I just 
this, this is what I know or this is what I do and uh, I'm very pleased to be able to help all the people that I'm able to help and uh, I find that there are some religions that uh, astrology is taboo, uh, talking about spirits is taboo. Uh, it's for them they I believe it's my personal opinion that they have God in the box and that God only exists for them in a specific time and place but as we know um, God is everywhere I'm a believer you know there are people that are not and, and I can appreciate how they feel but um, for me it's a it's a spiritual it's a spiritual thing and uh, I love being able to do what I do okay um Real quickly, because we only have a few minutes left, I talked to you about this before, and this is my curiosity. If a spirit's in a location, mm -hmm. do they see the location as it existed when they were alive in the time they died? Or when they talk about a haunting, can the spirit see the changes in the building in the future and the time go by? Yes. Uh, sometimes they're stuck in time period okay. and I've described it to you as like an onion skin where the onion because it's different time periods through time so you may have a certain property and I, I know several properties that it doesn't matter if you sell the property or they, you list the property it's the same type family it keeps coming back to it whether or not there's physical violence whether or not there's um, domestic violence it seems to happen in that particular so they're attracted spot. to the energy yes. and it's sort of yes and it continues to grow in that regard but at, in in regard to the question that you've asked a lot of times what happens is they are stuck in that particular time period sometimes they do want to be released from it and other times they're happy being where they are but some can yes. see the changes because yes. you hear a lot about you know renovations being oh, done. Yes. There's a house we're dealing with um, now that everything was fine. They mm -hmm. did the renovations and now all of a sudden things mm -hmm. were stirred up. So you get the feeling that whatever was there didn't like the what changes. was going on. Yes, exactly. exactly. So mm -hmm. that can happen. That was always one of the questions that I had because I always wondered if they can see what's moving forward after the time that they pass. Yes. Um, Connie, again, thank you so much for being here. You're a great friend. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen you in the buildings that we've been in together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard nothing but good things about you when it comes to readings. I definitely recommend you to everyone that thank I you. know. Um, thank you for continuing to support us at the Absolutely. Expo. Uh, great having you here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. My pleasure, always. Thank you for watching this episode of New Jersey Paranormal. See you next time.